Kleinkampfverband was a special unit of the German Navy in the last year of the Second World War. They were easily deployable maritime combat units, like manned torpedoes, combat swimmers, midget submarines, and demolition boats. Their deployment was part of a defensive strategy of the Navy, which was supported by Hitler. From the spring of 1944 onwards, they were forced to develop a naval combat concept that would allow the leadership to use pinprick tactics to sink Allied supply, war, and merchant ships in the coastal apron and thus cut off supplies to reduce. Their use also served to disrupt Allied shipping routes and to tie up forces. At the same time, submarine warfare was to be intensified in order to achieve a decisive turning point in the war. Combat badges were donated on November 30, 1944. The badges were awarded to soldiers in small combat units who had volunteered as lone fighters or to soldiers who were commanded but intended for special operations, after completing their training and proving their worth in training. Another condition was a two-month membership in the Small Combat Association. The Small Combat Weapons Probation Badge shows a stylized embroidered sawfish, which is golden yellow on a dark blue background. Both examples with a dark blue border and with a round cloth base have become known. Camp Schwimmer was the name of the combat swimmers of the Small Combat Unit. During the Second World War, such combat swimmers were initially missing in the Navy. It was not until the beginning of 1940 that the German military intelligence took up the idea again and set up special naval task forces. Draeger Company from Lübeck developed a breathing device with a closed oxygen circuit, the so-called rebreather. Its advantage was that it operated without any telltale air bubbles that could have been discovered by alert. A combat swimmer's equipment consisted of a rubber suit, with the top and trousers separated from each other. The top with long sleeves had integrated gloves, the long trousers had integrated shoes. Wrists and ankles were elastic. Both parts were connected to each other using a rubber belt. Underneath, the combat swimmer wore white woolen underwear, with the underpants, and a second layer of woolen underwear. In the winter months, another layer was worn between the underwear and the rubber suit as insulation from the cold. As a rule, the combat swimmer wore a piece of canvas over the rubber suit for camouflage purposes, which he tied tightly around himself. White areas of the body such as the face were blackened with greasy cream and additionally darkened with a camouflage net. The top of the head was a black or dark green wool hat. Lead weights, which the swimmer wore in a belt around his waist, provided the necessary downforce. The equipment also included swimming fins, wrist compass, diving watch and diving knife. Apart from his diving knife, the combat diver was unarmed during the operation. The primary weapon available to him was the sabotage mine. About 200 to 300 meters from the target, the combat diver had to stop any movement and, drifting with the current, approach the target. Ships were generally approached from the keel in order to appear like flotsam. The main problem with the combat swimmer's first missions was that the main focus of their training was on mining ships. In practice, however, the primary task of these fighters was now to mine and destroy bridges. At the time of the Allied landing in Normandy, the combat swimmers, who numbered 30 men at the time, were not yet used. The first deployment of combat swimmers took place on the night of June 22, 1944 during the Battle of Cannes. They attacked the famous Pegasus Bridge, which was captured by British glider infantry. Within just a few days, more than 10,000 Allied soldiers and vehicles had crossed these bridges. Due to the massive anti-aircraft protection of these bridges, their destruction by the Luftwaffe was impractical. Army pioneers also failed. For this purpose, the Navy sent 10 combat swimmers. However, due to a traffic accident, for combat divers suffered injuries and were subsequently unable to take part in the operation. The bridges were to be destroyed using two modified torpedoes, each weighing 800 kilograms. The start of the operation was set at 11 p.m. and the timer of the torpedoes was set and armed accordingly at 5.30 a.m. the following day. However, the intended torpedoes were balanced for salt water, so both immediately sank to the bottom in fresh water. 
This led to considerable delays in operations for both groups, as empty petrol cans first had to be organized to give the torpedoes the necessary buoyancy. The first group entered the canal near merville franceville Plage shortly after midnight. Their destination was the Pont de Ranville Canal Bridge, 12 kilometers away. Due to a slight countercurrent and leaking fuel cans, the first group's approach was difficult. As noted on their mission maps, the group passed one bridge occupied by the Allies unnoticed and approached the second, their actual objective. Once there, they attached their explosive device to the central pillar and returned to their waiting response team four hours later without any special incident. The German command was surprised that the group had covered its 24 kilometers, km there and back, so quickly. The investigations confirmed the suspicion that another bridge had been mined. On the present general staff map, two bridges had to be passed and the third had to be mined. When comparing with the combat swimmers maps, one of these passing bridges was missing, so that the second bridge was accidentally mined instead of the third. It collapsed promptly at 5.30 after the explosive charge was detonated. The second group aimed for the Pont de Heronville was also only able to start after a considerable delay. However, she suffered from the another problem. Due to severe pain in his foot caused by swimming fins that were too tight one combat swimmer stopped the mission and could not be persuaded to continue. However, the other remaining combat swimmers carried out their mission, overcame a wooden barrier and attached their explosive charge to the target bridge. However, they had to fight against a stronger current on their way back, so they soon fell behind schedule and eventually had to continue their march back to land. The two of them were not far away when their mine detonated. The Allies then began a large-scale search for the saboteurs, and only with a lot of luck did the two manage to reach their own lines the next day. Overall, the first mission of the combat swimmers was relatively successful. Another mission was the destruction of the Ludendorff Bridge at Remagen, which also played an important role on the Western Front. The 9th U.S. Armored Division occupied it intact on the afternoon of March 7, 1945. The main blowing up of the bridge by German engineers failed due to the fuses being cut. Just 24 hours after its capture, 8,000 American soldiers had crossed the Rhine. German artillery continued to bombard the bridge for several hours without causing it to collapse. Hitler then ordered their destruction from the air. But the Luftwaffe also failed to make the bridge impassable. The naval task force set up for the demolition purpose was codenamed Puma and consisted of 12 combat swimmers who were equipped with four mines. These arrived in Remagen on March 8, 1945. As the combat swimmers prepared for their mission in the strictest secrecy, they were spotted by the Allies and so disturbed with artillery fire that the mission had to be aborted. By that time two temporary bridges had gone into operation, one about 8 kilometers upstream and another footbridge a few hundred meters below the Remagen Bridge. After the main bridge collapsed, on the night of March 18, 1945, seven combat swimmers started their mission against the pontoon bridge near Linz on the Rhine. The water temperature in the Rhine was just 7 degrees Celsius, which meant that two combat swimmers froze to death on their way. Two others were killed by enemy fire and the remaining three, including their operations leader, were taken prisoner. At the end of March 1945, the operations of the small combat units in the area of Army Group H were largely stopped due to the development of the situation. On April 20, two combat swimmer groups were moved to the Magdeburg area in order to be used against existing Elba crossings. No circumstances are known about these operations. The use of the small combat units ended with the surrender of the German army on May 8, 1945, but the last two combat swimmers fought until May 12, May 1945. I hope you enjoyed this episode and to make sure you don't miss my future work, please make sure you are subscribed to my channel and press the bell notification button. Thank you and see you in the next video.